Studio D, and I'm here on Chapter 5, I believe, because we read more than we were supposed to yesterday of Killer Love. It was just too good, so I couldn't stop. But, let's begin. So, when we left off, This is getting, like, way too juicy, though. I mean, like, super juicy. Jack? This is Jack talking, not... Oh, on. Oh, I have a snap camera filter vampire. Hello. It's just so becoming, right? I, uh... Don't say it every stream, but I try to because people will be like, why is she a vampire? Because I am real life, dumbass. That's my real job. Alright. Oh, bye, Anna. And a goodbye kiss? We kissed. Anna placed a hand on my forehead. Are you okay? You might have a fever. I can give you something for that. I smiled. I'm okay. It's just... What is it? Trouble? You can tell me anything. Um, do you know that sandwich shop? Which one? Next to the... Where I... Next to the store. You want a sandwich from there? Yeah. If that's okay. Well, there is always a huge line here. Please, Anna. It would mean a lot to me. Well, how can I resist? Of course, darling. I'll get you anything. What kind of sandwich do you want? Anything you pick. Hmm. I'll get you something you like. You're not getting much exercise. I don't want you to get fat. Is that alright? Yep. Great. And don't forget your remembering session. You've been doing things right. Yeah. And I found and shook my head. Nothing yet? Oh well, it's not even been two weeks yet. You'll get there soon. I'm sure you will. Yeah, I will. Anna pinched my cheek and kissed me again and left. And I went and threw up in the toilet. Oh, God. I brushed my teeth and washed my mouth three times over. I can't, I can't go on like this. I couldn't keep living here. I waited ten minutes. Until I was sure Anna was gone. Then I pulled back the heavy curtains. Down on the street, there was a single person looking sad and abandoned. I waved at her. She looked up, nodded, and walked into the building. Hi, Jack. I was so happy to see her, I wanted to cry. Oh, Grace. We started seeing each other in secret five days ago. I knew how long exactly I had started counting the days again. That big cloud of confusion in my brain was gone. I wasn't Anna's dog anymore. 
It was Arnold's own fault. What else could she expect? Having me dig around my past like that? But it was scary. How close I'd come to letting go. If things were a bit different, I might have kept on being a half-mute idiot forever. And I never would have let Grace inside. When I first heard Grace's voice again, I thought I'd finally snapped. I thought I was hallucinating. But I opened the door, and there she was. Grace? Grace, I'm, I'm so happy to see you, I thought. After your message, I thought I'd never... Don't say that. Don't say that again, just for a minute. We put our arms around each other. We'd only been apart for a few weeks. So many things had happened that it felt like years. You knew it. You don't hate me. I didn't know what she was talking about, and I didn't even really care. Only one thing mattered right now. Let's go. Let's get out of here. I've been working up the courage to leave ever since I had become myself again. As stupid as it seemed, I was afraid of going outside. But with Grace here, I can leave. I can do anything. You can't. Huh? You're not going to leave here. Not yet. Why not? Do you have any idea what it's like for me in here? I can't imagine, Jack. I'm so, so sorry. I, I didn't believe you. You knew how dangerous Anna was right from the start. That's all the more reason to get the hell away. I told you, not yet. This isn't something we can run away from. I so wish we could just pack up and leave, but Anna's going to follow us wherever we go. God damn it. I stomped on the ground like an angry child. Grace was right. Anna had followed me here. If we left, now she'd do it again. We have to report her to the... No, Jack. No police. They'd trust her first, a million times over. I guess they would. Besides, I wasn't even sure if she'd done anything actually illegal. But what then? What do we do? I don't know. Oh, why is this happening to us? Even as we talked, we kept our ears to the hallway. Thought we both knew Anna was at work. The slightest echo of a footstep was enough to make us jump. Why can't she just leave us alone? What does she even want? What does she even want from you? I think I might have a clue. I told Grace about how Anna was trying to make me remember stuff from years ago. But it was so long ago. Anything could have made her obsessed with me. Jack? What? I'm sorry to say this. I know you always hated it. When I did. What is it? I had a good feeling what she'd say. I didn't like it. You really don't have to remember. I pinched the bridge of my nose. There was a big headache coming on right behind the eyes. I know. You can't win against her like this. 
Not when she knows so much more than me, Joy. I know, right? Do you think you can do it? I want to do it. But I think I can. I never try. Not seriously. Not since the first few days. Good. Please do try. And thank you for not giving in, Jack. I know. It must be hard. Do you need anything from the outside? I could sneak something in. I don't have a lot, but no, I don't need anything. Anna, keep me well fed. I put as much contempt as I could into those words. Are you doing all right, though? You don't have any money, do you? I think Anna's got some stash somewhere around here. Grace refused. We can't risk her noticing. And besides, I'm doing okay. I'm staying with a friend. They're a big help. Oh. All right, then. So she landed on her feet. It made me happy to hear that. I'll be going now, Jack. What, already? Anna won't be home for hours. She's not supposed to. We've got to be careful. And being here at all is making me so nervous I could die. You're right. Besides, we'll have plenty of time to spend together once this is over. Yeah. Just us two. We looked at each other lovingly. Then a door slammed shut. Somewhere in the building. I really need to go. Bye, Jack. Bye, Grace. I love you. Oh, I wondered if it was still okay for me to tell Grace I loved you. But the words went and said themselves. Grace stood on her tiptoes to kiss me on the cheek. I love you too. Locking the door after her was one of the most difficult things I had ever done. But seeing her had given me the courage I needed. I felt I could do anything. And now, here we are, five days later, two secret meetings later. I couldn't go on. Grace, I'm sorry. You can't stay here anymore. I really, really can't. I'm at my limit. No, I'm way past my limit. I'm surprised I've still gotten it together. Baby, I'm sorry. Have you made any progress? It was an echo of Anna's constant questioning. But Grace wasn't doing it on purpose, I told myself. I kept my anger in check. No, nothing. I can't remember anything from that time. It's like one big blind spot. I can't do it. It's hopeless. If you say it's really hopeless, then I guess it's no use at all. You said the same thing last time, too. But I still made you try. It's my fault. You're in so, so much pain. It's not your fault. It's hers. <sighs> I need to pack a few things. Wait here. I'll be ready in five. That's a no again. What? You can't mean... I want you to stay here, Jack. There's no way I can. Just a little bit more, I promise. She came up to me, and I felt my upper arms. You're so thin now. But you could still hold her down, right? 
A chill went over me. What do you mean? Aren't we running away? We can't run away. She'll find us again, and then what? You can't live like that, always afraid. I'm sure you can't either. So you're going to... She couldn't mean... Grace whispered. No. It's wrong, plain wrong. Yeah, it is. But what else is there to do? She backed us into a corner. It's practically self-defense. I guess if you look at it that way. No. Absolutely not. My head pounded at the temples. I'm so happy you agree. I so wish we could do it today, but I need to prepare. Can you stand being here until tomorrow evening? Yeah? Perfect. Thank you. Tomorrow, Anna has a morning shift, and she'll be back by early afternoon. Let's go for 6 o'clock. Okay. Okay. 6 o'clock. Please have her immobilized by then. Immobilized? How? I was already swept up in this plan. I didn't think twice about what Grace said anymore. The more immobilized, the better. If you just sat on her, that'd be alright, I guess. But tying her down would be a big help. And if you could knock her out, that would be amazing. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I'll be outside in the hallway. When she's all tied up or passed out or whatever, shout out so I know it's safe, okay? All right. And then, what will you do then? To answer Grace, took a small knife out of her pocket. She turned it in her hand a few times. Only then did I realize the full weight of what she would do. And only then did I realize how she didn't seem bothered by it. Grace, what happened? What do you mean? This isn't like you. The Grace I know. I hesitated. What did I do to you? Grace's mood seemed to evaporate. She pressed her face against my cheek. She did a lot. She... I felt like I was dirt. And I promised myself that it would never happen again. The knife was still in her hand. It looked so sharp. She took you from me, too. That's the one thing I really can't forgive. Imagine how happy we'd be if she never existed. I put my arms around her. I get it. Then let me do it. Give me the knife. I don't want to see you do this. Maybe I'll be able to work something out, I thought. Maybe it won't have to lead to bloodshed. I hated the sight of blood. Sorry, Jack. This isn't something I have to do. It's just... No, it's not just that. The truth is... I want to do it myself. It's like nothing will ever feel right again if I don't do it. Grace put a hand on my chin. I leaned in closer. But she stopped me before we kissed. I love you, Jack. I love you, too. <sighs> Her skin felt hot. She was giving off heat like a furnace. Are you scared? Yeah. 
Please don't be. One day we'll look back on this and laugh. I wake up with a bitter taste in my mouth. One day we'll look back and laugh. I'm sure as hell not laughing now. That's a good thought to have. What the? Oh, it's you. Don't sneak up on me like that, Christ. You should laugh as much as you can, you know? It helps to reduce stress. It's hard to find things funny with you around. Do you have to come here so often? I see more than enough of you in my dreams. That long, shameful month I spent with her keeps coming to me while I sleep. It's souring my mood. I can't even pretend around Anna anymore. Maybe I should write about it in the journal after all. No, screw that. It'd be too embarrassing to write it down. Jack, that's so sweet. Huh? What is? So you dream about me? I have dreams about you, too, every night. Yeah, but mine are nightmares. Looks like someone's cranky from having just woken up. You better not... Be so rude to your doctor, though. He's not as nice as I am. He might kick you out if you misbehave. I've seen him do that. And that's fine. I might be happier out on the street. The doctor comes along soon enough. He has good news for me, he says. It's looking good, Mr. Friday. Far better than before. Your blood pressure's fine, and the other things, too. It's great news, doctor. My attention is split between what he's saying and what I see in his coat pocket. It's glinting. Is it a pen? It's not a pen. It's something else. My heart beats faster. Thankfully, I still remember to ask an important question. So, when can I? Leave? Yeah, when are you going to release me? The doctor scratches his head and then counts on his fingers. Oh, Wednesday next week? Next week? Yeah. Wow, well, thanks, doctor. You're welcome. It's way earlier than I expected. I'd prepare myself for being here a few more weeks. Thank you so much. Here. I put out my hand for him to shake. After a second, he takes it. I pull him closer and he stumbles, nearly sprawling across my bed. It's a very sloppy handshake. Sorry, doctor. My bad. He coughs. Oh, it's fine. You've really helped me. A lot. All in a day's work. So yes, next week. And then, you've got rehab. Hmm? Rehab, doc? Oh, yes. After you leave here, it's straight to the physical rehab facility for you. We don't have an inpatient facility here, but there's a great one on the other side of town. I'm sending you there. I'm not going home? No, of course not. You'd end up hurting yourself or with a limp. Is that what you want? No, no. That won't do. That won't do at all. He jots down to me. Wednesday, that's in four days. The nurses have been exercising you, right? They what? Huh? Exercising you. They haven't? He turns to Anna. What's this about, nurse? 
Excuse me? You should You should have been giving him some mild exercise. Well, uh, you never told us that, Doctor. Can't you tell by yourself? The doctor starts mumbling to himself while making more notes. Christ, I really have to do everything here, don't I? No, no, that's fine. Not like you're paid to do these things or anything. And how long will I have to stay there, doctor? He raises his hands as if giving up on me. It's always that with you, isn't it? Look, how long you stay at the facility is up to the people there. I can't tell you that. But don't hold your breath. I let out a laugh. Man, you're really going to milk me dry, aren't you? I bet you've got to deal with the people over there, doctor. Don't you know I'm poor as hell? He makes a great face. The thought never crossed my mind. I live only to help people like yourself, Mr. Friday, so I don't appreciate hearing such accusations. I'd like you to be more careful about what you say. Understand? Understood. Good. And he rushes off, leather shoes creaking. Well, then... Anna grabs hold of my right leg, the one that isn't broken. Hey, what do you think you're doing? It's exercise. You remember what the doctor said, don't you? Alright, well, I suppose it's fine. She brings my knee to my chest. The joints in my leg pop. Stiff. I haven't used them in a long time. How is it? Any pain? No. A little sore, but it doesn't hurt. Okay. She brings my leg back down. I'll keep going then, if you don't mind. Keep going as you please. She repeats the whole motion, ever so gently. If this will help me start walking faster, I'm fine with it. Hmm. Her hands are on me. When she helps me fold my leg up, her neck is so close I could. How do you feel about what the doctor said? Hmm. What did he say? That I'm out of here by next week? I whisper so the other patients can't hear. How does that make you feel? Are you angry? Anna's smile doesn't break, but her fingers press against me more forcefully. I'm not angry, of course. It's nice that you're getting better. Oh, yeah? And I'll still visit you at the facility. I'm sure. Oh, but what if they're very strict about visiting hours? That would be a bummer, wouldn't it? For the first time in so long, I feel like I have the upper hand. It's going to be my head. And who knows? Maybe I'll tell them I don't want any visitors. To focus on your recovery? Yeah, of course. That's good. I want you healthy, darling. She stops exercising in mid-motion. I can't wait. How long do you think I waited before? I'm a patient girl. Her fingers find their way up my inner leg. I can wait. No problem. Because after this is done, you'll be mine again. All mine. Forever. I grab her by the wrist. My fingernails dig into her skin. Ouch. You're hurting me. Shut up. How come? What makes you so... I'm, I'm never living with you again. Know that. You oh, sweetie. You do as I say. Of course.
we still have grace. Well, yes, but there's one much dearer to my heart. Do you know what that is? I glare back. It's that you love me. I don't. You do. You love me, even if you don't know you love me. Deep down, you love me more than anything in the world. Just like I love you. But you spent so long living all these lies that you just started believing them yourself. Don't worry though, I'll help you remember all over again. She finally lets go of you. Get plenty of rest. You have a lot ahead of you. She goes away, leaving me to myself and to my broken body. That night, I dream of how I got to be like this. Chapter 7, Not a Pretty Sight. Oh, shall we go on? Shall we read chapter 7 too? Oh, oh. Let's just go ahead. The evening of the day Grace told me we would kill Anna together. I worried so much that I got a fever. Goodness. I was laying down in the bed. Anna put a cold, wet towel over my forehead. I did think you had a bit of a fever, but you said you were fine. When I laughed, I mumbled something. I might have been trying to tell her to stay away. It was seeing Anna thinking about what we do to her that had me scared so much that it made me sick. I was weak. I can't understand what you're saying. Whatever it is, you can tell me later. But now just rest. My thermometer reading made her frown. If this goes up anymore, I'm taking you to the hospital. I croaked out that I was fine. Oh, sweetie. You will be fine, but only if you do as I say. Try to get some sleep. I'll get you some medicine and a nice cup of ginger root tea. Thanks. I managed to sleep for the next hour, though I'd wake up constantly. I managed to sleep for the next hour. We've already said this. Oh, right. Let's get comfy here. After that, I took a shower. The water was so cold on my skin it hurt. But Anna had warned me not to set it too hot, so I didn't. Alright, it's time to get comfortable. So, let me adjust this really quick. I didn't know I was going to go into another chapter, but it's so interesting, so... That's what I'm doing. Oh, my vampire face. Ooh. Put it here, but I'm getting ready to go back into it. Oh, I can't believe it's already chapter seven. No, I don't want to use it. That's quite my time. Okay.
tell when my cats is coming. And what do you want, you cat? This is my cat bed. Uh, it sounds like a, a wild beast. It's, he purrs really, really loud. It's a black cat. The water was so cold on my skin, it hurt, but Anna had warned me not to sit, set it too hot, so I didn't. I put on a fresh set of clothes, and I lay down on the clean sheets Anna had laid out. Within ten minutes, everything was clammy with sweat again. Anna didn't blame me. She didn't have a bad word to say, didn't even sigh, though I knew she was tired. She was a saint. She was being so kind to me, and I was going to help kill her. Bastard. There must be, I thought, some other way. I couldn't let this end in violence. I just couldn't. So my fever numb brain came up with the best plan it could. Oh, what is that? Like? Hmm, I don't know, Jack. Are you sure? Yes, I feel so much better now. I can take a day off. I'll probably be fine. I'll be okay. See? I handed her the thermometer. It was a mercury thermometer. And I carefully let it reach only a near fever point. I didn't lie when I said I felt better, but I did still have a fever. Well, alright then. Please stay safe and call if there's any problems. Anything at all, okay? Okay. She left and I got to work. There was a trace of my past somewhere in the apartment. There had to be. I didn't know where it was or what it would look like, but I hoped that Anna had brought something with her here. I was going to find it. Then I'd confront Anna with it, and whatever happened after that, I wasn't going to let anyone get killed. I really should have done this before, I thought. It would have saved me a lot of grief. But it was no use thinking about what could have been. So I searched. I didn't have to search long. I found what I was looking for in Anna's nightstand. In the top drawer. It was the only thing there. Anna had come to trust me so much that she hadn't bothered hiding it. Or she wanted me to find it. When I saw it, I didn't think it was the clue I was looking for. It was a picture book. It badly needed one, too. Thick pieces of paper stapled together. The drawings smeared on, the crown. I read it on a whim. I was curious. By the last page, I, was, I wasn't curious anymore. There wasn't, this wasn't a picture book. It was a confession.
the little world. There once was a little wolf. It had a mommy wolf and it had a daddy wolf. But mommy wolf and daddy wolf didn't love the little wolf. Why is that? They didn't love it. And they didn't love each other. And they fought and fought and fought and fought. And then one day, something happened. And the little wolf was all by itself. But the little wolf didn't stay alone for long. One day, a family of sheep took it in. There was a mommy sheep and a daddy sheep and the little lamb and the big dog named Buddy. They were a happy family. But they didn't like wolves. Daddy sheep said, the little wolf. Wolves should all be locked away. And he also said, you are lucky to be alive. They did not know that the little wolf was a wolf. So the little wolf played along and it went ba ba like a sheep and ate grass like a sheep. And for a while it was happy. But it wasn't happy for long. The little wolf was a wolf. It was hungry. It needed to hunt. It knew how to hunt, too. It had seen Daddy Wolf hunt. It had seen him do all kinds of things. The first thing that the little wolf hunted was the big dog named Buddy. Mommy sheep and daddy sheep were really scared. Oh no, they said. There are wolves around. We should be careful. They didn't know the little wolf had done it. But the little lamb did know. The little lamb didn't like the little wolf. The little wolf was afraid the little lamb was going to tell mommy sheep and, and daddy sheep everything. And it did tell them. But the sheep didn't believe the little lamb. They didn't believe one word. Why is that? And days passed and weeks passed. And the little wolf was hungry again. Very hungry. And so one night, it went to mommy's sheep and daddy's sheep's room. It ripped them open while they were sleeping. It got their blood all over itself. And then the little wolf went to the little lamb. The little lamb was awake. The little lamb had never heard the noise of its parents being hunted. It saw the blood and it smelled the blood too. The little wolf came closer, and as the little wolf came closer, it saw the little lamb was not a lamb at all. It was a wolf, just like the little wolf. It had been hiding here with all those sheep. Maybe it did not even know that it was a wolf. The little wolf did not kill it. The little wolf could not hunt one of its own. So the little wolf went away. Before it left, the little wolf promised they would meet again. They would be two wolves in a world of sheep. You bitch. I found it hard to stand back. Up. Oh, you bitch. This is what you wanted me to remember. This is what you... The psycho had taken everything from me. Had almost done so a second time. And for what? I swear. I spoke aloud. I imagined my family there with me. The family she'd taken. 
where all like what? Not even killing her seems enough anymore. Or maybe it would be enough. As long as we made it hurt. Where am I? I stirred only slightly, awakening the days, not knowing if I am feeling around me as a dream, a delusion, or reality. Sitting up, but I'm not sitting still. There's a rumbling underneath me. There is wind in my face. Somehow, though, all this, a sense that it's in nightmare. I try to speak. My limp mouth only manages a rasping breath. Oh. Awake already? Tis tis, that won't do. A familiar beasting of pain pinches the back of my neck. I feel myself sinking. Then I feel nothing. I'm gone, no more rumbling. No more wind in my face, no more me. By the time Anna came home, I had been stewing in my hate for hours. My hate for her had become a living thing, eating away at me. I'm back. Jack, hello. I tried to say hi back, but I couldn't. If I said anything at all, the hate would come spilling out of me, and it wasn't time yet. Where are you, Jack? On the sound at words, this made me happy. I couldn't fake it anymore. If she saw me, she would know. I ran to the bathroom, slammed the door shut, and locked. Oh, oh excuse me. Please. I'll be here, I thought, until it's time. I'll stay here. If I see her, I'll lose my mind. Honest footsteps came pattering over to where I was. Sweetie, are you okay? She, she tried the handle, found it locked. You're still sick. Well, I knew I should have gone back to work. There was a pause, then she tried again to open the door. Hey, at least say something, you're scaring me. Jack, can you hear me? I'm fine. A sigh of relief. Oh, good. Let me in now, darling. No, I'm staying here for a while. Please open the door, Jack. You don't sound all that good. You sound like you're in pain. I said I'm fine. There came another long moment of silence. Please, please tell me what's wrong. This time I didn't answer. I lay down on the cold, tiled floor. I would stay like this until I felt it was about six o'clock. It's not like I had a clock in here with me. But it was better to guess and to go out now. Jack, go away. She walked away, and I thought that was it. But I heard her come back a minute later. I'm coming in, Jack. Stand back from the door. The hell are you? Something large and heavy struck the door. Stop it! It struck again, and then once more. The flimsy wind water was starting to cave in at the handle. Any more and it would splinter. Anna, stop. There was a dull thud as she let something heavy drop to the floor. Ha ha, come out then. I hesitated. All right. She grunted as she picked her tool back up again. No wait. 
Stop, I'm coming out. The door handle was smashed so badly it almost refused to open. Mm, Jack. Anna dropped what turned out to be a sledgehammer, dropped it next to her purse, which was on the floor. She all but jumped on me with open arms. Don't do that to me again. I backed off away from her. Something is wrong. I can feel it. What happened, Jack? Nothing happened. Is it your... She went to feel my temperature with her hand, but I slapped it away. Don't touch me. My words stunned her for a second. And we were making such great progress. What went wrong? You know what went wrong. You know damn well. Everything's been wrong, ever since the beginning. You're not making any sense, Jack. For now, just calm down. It's going to be all right. No, stay away from me. My back touched the wall. I stumbled. Anna bent down as if to tie her shoelaces. I saw her hand go into her purse. Then she leapt. She was on me before I could react. I thought she'd stab me with something, gut me then and there. Instead, she wrapped her arms around me and put her lips to mine. Mm. I tried to pry her off, but she collected herself around my body like a snake. I couldn't find purchase. I panicked. Her kissing was violent. Hardly kissing at all. More like she was biting my lips off. I tried to put my hands between us and rip her from me, but Anna wouldn't budge. I felt powerless. I couldn't even scream. I tried to, but it was too muffled for anyone to hear. Then, in a moment of luck, I managed to stumble around. Anna was still on me until she was the one with her back to the wall. I half ran, half fell into the wall. Anna took the brunt of the impact. Owie! Ha 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 That hurt. She was down on her knees now, rubbing the back of her head with her left hand. Go fuck yourself. My lips pulsed with pain. Felt raw. I touched them and my hand came back bloody. God damn it. You real I realized very late that there had been another flash of pain during our struggle. A feeling like someone had pinched me very strongly on my left shoulder. I looked at the spot and found nothing there. Anna? What was? Anna looked at me, smiled, and opened up her right hand. It took me a few seconds to see what she was holding there. My eyes were having trouble focusing. Oh, a syringe. An empty syringe. Oh, shit. That sure was tricky. What was? What, did you drug me with it? She waved the question away, like it was no concern of mine. Something to help you go into a nice, long sleep. Isn't that nice? Then we can begin your re-education. Your re Re-education. Don't fuck with me. I took a step towards her. My legs felt heavy. Was it just me? Or was it already getting hard to move? I'll never go through that again. 
You hear? I grabbed at her, but my hand struck the wall instead. Almost a second after Anna had moved out of the way. Easy now. She put a hand on my shoulder. Just, what are you trying to do? Fuck off. I twisted around to get at her, but it was like moving underwater. Oh, please, don't do this, Jack. You're making it too fun to tease you. I won't be able to hold back. I stumbled down, just barely catching myself, before my head hit the floor. My eyes wandered up to the ceiling. My limbs were lead. I felt I could not move. There you go. Help. I was a fly. Hmm. Help. Trapped in a spider's web. Honestly, what are you doing? Help. There's no way out. Stop that. Help. The neighbors will think we're weird. I went to shout again, but something caught in my throat. And instead, I nearly coughed my lungs out on the floor. Are you all tuckered out now, sweetie? Goodness, you really had some fight in you. You're pretty scary. Next time, I'll definitely... Hmm, what's that? I heard it then, too. The front door handle rattled, and someone banged on it twice. Ah, Anna laughed. I think I know who this is, and it dawned on me, too. I tried to shout again, but I was still coughing. Anna went to the front door on tiptoes and checked the peephole. She had to put a hand over her mouth to stop herself from giggling. To me, she mouthed the word, death. I knew her. She was here early, and I'd fail her. Anna waited until the banging started to gone. In a single fluid motion, she unlocked the door, opened it, and stood back. Ah. Grace stumbled in, her toothpick with a knife in him. Grit. Jack. What? Anna was a blur. She elbowed Grace in the stomach, then jumped back as if expecting Grace to slash at her. Grace did nothing of the sort. Her knife slipped from her hand. She fell down right after it. Huh? That's it? Really? After closing and locking the door again, Anna stepped closer, fearless now. She kicked Grace in the ribs. <sighs> you invade someone's home, and this is all you can do? Someone's precious home? Please stop. I'm sorry. Anna sighed. She's hopeless. She went to her purse and rummaged through it. I knew you had your hand in this. You're the only one who can corrupt my jack to stay. And no more. Anna brought back another syringe. This one was filled with clear liquid. This is a jack dose. Try not to die, okay? Stop. Stop that. I had managed to stand back. I wasn't going to let her freak hurt Grace. Leave her alone. For Christ's sake, don't do that. Do what? I looked again. It had already been done. The syringe was empty. I'd been too slow. Sit down and be good, 
patient boy again. While I decide what I'm going to do with this girl. Anna wandered off into another room. She shouted from there. Do we have any rope, Jack? I'm sure I brought some. I rushed to where Grace was on the floor. She was squirming in pain. She wasn't squirming in pain anymore. Instead, she was lying down incredibly still. For a second, I thought she was dead, and my heart sank. But she was still alive. She was breathing quick, shallow breaths. Her eyes were closed but fluttering. Shit. I needed to get her to a doctor. I looked up to the entrance. By some miracle, Anna had left the key in the door. What about duct tape, Jack? Hey, Jack! I managed to turn the key in the lock. Even in the state I was in, I turned back to Grace. Felt she probably couldn't hear me. I had to tell her something. Grace, I'll go get help. I'll be back soon. I couldn't carry her out. I was on the verge of collapsing on my own. The best I could do was get someone down on the street to help me. I turned the handle using both hands. The door wouldn't open. What the? Oh no. The door was bolted shut. Anna must have added the bolt lock on her own. Mine and Grace's apartment didn't have one. I tried to unlock it, but my fingers weren't moved like I wanted them to. I tried and tried again. At best, I managed to get my nails caught in the bolt, almost ripping them off. I nearly cried from frustration. Damn it, damn it, damn it. On the verge of giving up and letting go, I looked around the small apartment and found my means of escape. Ugh. I either have to use my really nice cuffs on her or go to the... Hmm, Jack? Where are... Oh, shit. Anna had seen me hanging out of the window. Legs first. She ran over to me. I slid further back. Jack, you'll fall. Yeah. It was a miracle I'd managed to slide back the curtains and open the window with my useless hands. Stay away from me. I was holding on to the windowsill with open palm, and I was slipping. No, you'll hurt yourself. Take my hand. I glanced at the street below. When I'd gone to climb out, it didn't look too much of a drop. This was only the second floor after all. Now, I wasn't so sure. <sighs> Excuse me. There was so much empty space between me and the hard concrete. Take my hand, Jack. If I land it well, though, I'd be fine. Probably. What are you waiting for? Anna grabbed my wrist. I... My hands let go. I was not connected to anything. I floated. God. The impact knocked the wind right out of me. There wasn't much pain, but I knew I landed pretty badly. I looked down at my body. My leg was a shape no leg should be. I came back to consciousness, gasping for air. I look at my leg. There's a blanket over it. I push the blanket aside. My leg is there in a the cast. It's ramrod straight. The sight calms me. Only then do I realize 
that I'm not in my hospital bed. And since we are now entering chapter 8, I am going to stop and we will read this tomorrow. And I'll see you later. Bye. Don't forget to, uh, yeah, subscribe and like my channel. I love you. Until next time. Ciao, ciao. Be good. Or don't be good. Because I won't. Um, I'll probably eat a couple of people tonight. Maybe a couple of tunes in town. Blah.